Hey students, welcome to episode 43 of the Film Student Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Lazzaroni. Well, when it rains, it pours. For the second week in a row, I have another member of our illustrious faculty joining me. My guest this week is creative writing teacher Terrence T. Brown. We talk about making the move from sports journalism to screenwriting. I try to get him interested in the lost pilot for Heat Vision and Jack. And Terrence pitches his latest project, a web series called Wheelhouse. On with the show. I started out doing journalism mm -hmm. uh, in college. I thought I was going to be a sports journalist. I was the editor of my high school newspaper and uh, just like knew I was going to do journalism. And then I went to uh, Vanderbilt, decided I was going to be a sports journalist, mm -hmm. started covering the football team, and was like, man, we suck. We're in the, <laughs> we're in the <laughs> SEC. This isn't fun. We're losing all the time. I don't yeah. want to cover a losing team. And just quickly, just like did not like that. Plus, I always had plans to like want to play basketball when I was there. So yeah. I was like, I don't want to be like trying to cover a game and playing in a game. Mm -hmm. And just kind of fell out of love with that. Tried entertainment journalism for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Got this great internship with Vibe Magazine, and hated that. <laughs> and was like, <laughs> oh man, I this sucks. I don't want to do journalism anymore. So I thought I was going to be an English major. Took my first like filmmaking class and was like, "Oh, this is this is cool. It's kind of like writing, but not." Yeah. <laughs> so, I uh, got into screenwriting and and thought I was like pretty good at it and uh, decided I wanted to do that. Came to Chicago to do the Northwestern MFA program mm -hmm. and writing for the screen and stage, and um, really came here for like connections. I ended up yeah. at like writing camp, and I met this guy uh, Andy Myra. Mm -hmm. uh, who was there, who was doing the directing program at Second City. So we became like fast friends, started hanging out. And um, he was like teaching here. He was teaching like a sitcom writing class. Yeah. And he, we would just go to comedy shows together all the time. And he got this job writing at The Onion. And then he had to leave a Second City class. And he, he was basically like, hey, do you want to take these last four classes I have teaching? And I was like, yes, I need money, please. Yeah. Uh, and so I just came in basically as just like a sub for him. And they needed somebody to do the class the next term. And so I did that. Yeah. And just kind of like fell in here. Nobody really ever asked me if I could write <laughs> or <laughs> or really like knew what I was doing. You were vetted by the person who you replaced. Exactly. That's, a, that's how that worked. <laughs> yeah. and, and like only sort of. We were just buddies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I've just been like at Second City ever since. Yeah. And then when the film school started, it was like, hey, this guy is taught writing here for three or four years. It's like it's an obvious switch over yeah. to, to to start doing this stuff. It's not even necessarily a switch because you do you still teach some of the other classes for Second City? Or uh, I don't. I, I recently like stopped doing that. Okay. Once I started teaching at uh, at colleges, then right. I, I stopped doing the classes here. So where else are you teaching? Uh, so University of Chicago, Loyola, mm -hmm. and Northwestern right now. And maybe DePaul, you, if that. How do you story? have time to do anything else? Well, <laughs> that I would feel like question. commuting alone <laughs> is is probably eating your life. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. That's yeah. the worst. Uh, I only do two of those classes per term, though. Okay, which, which helps. So I'm doing Northwestern Loyola right now, mm -hmm. and in the winter I'll do University of Chicago and Loyola. Mm -hmm. So that like helps it a lot. Okay. So it breaks it out. It's kind of like I used to play in bands in DC, and I, they were all tribute acts. Uh, and uh, and but the nice thing about a tribute act is you can't play like with like an incubus tribute band every month because you're not going to draw an audience <laughs> right. after one month out. So we would just separate shows by like four months, so oh, I could just perfect. rotate them. So I was in like four at a time, but exactly still exactly. only had like a show a month. Yeah, it's exactly like that. Yeah. Right? So I teach at all those places, but never all at once. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, and so, what kind of stuff have you worked on the in the past? I know you just you've got Wheelhouse, the uh, hey. the, the web series just just wrapped shooting. We were literally talking about it before uh, before we started recording. Uh -huh. uh, but what other stuff? Um, mostly my own stuff, mm -hmm. which is which is pretty cool. I, I love the feeling of like being able to just jump into my own project. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff that's like Wheelhouse, kind of in the pipeline that mm -hmm. I, I'm writing. Uh, Wheelhouse is done with that guy Andy Myra, who mm -hmm. <laughs> like got me the job at Second City. Yeah. Um, and we've been like writing some other stuff together. Uh, I mostly consider myself a film guy, mm -hmm. but it seems everything that film I... Film is in, like, feature right. films? Yeah, it's that in sort feature of thing. films, yeah. I definitely, like, love feature films. I love things that end. Yeah. I, I hate the open-endedness of, like, of TV. Of keeping a series yeah, that has to yeah. keep, somehow keep living. The idea that I would have to go more than one season 
<laughs> with something <laughs> it's just like it, it terrifies me on a level i yeah. just like i don't want to do it i just want to i would kill every character off every show i i would ever have control of would be one season and that well, would be it. they talk here about the like the kind of the circular life cycle of like sitcom characters that there it's mm-hmm. you, you begin an episode you go through some type of change but you end up back where you started oh yeah and that that, that you have to theoretically do that for you know seven eight seasons for some of these shows yeah. like that it, it is yeah. it can be daunting to figure out how do you keep a character Super daunting. moving without ever actually growing <laughs> yeah with <laughs> uh, i remember watching uh there's an episode of community called repilot yes <laughs> and it's basically just jeff becoming a teacher at the community college that yeah and I'm like, oh, I, I can't do this. That's, it's honestly depressing in a, in a way for the yeah. character and for the writers having to do it, you know? So I know you so mentioned community. I know you, uh, the, I think the first day of class that we had you for, uh, for creative writing, you had Rick and Morty uh, figures in, in your backpack. Oh, yeah. Are you just a big Dan Harmon fan or is it, or is it just happened to be that those two properties both spoke to you? Uh, they just both spoke to me. I don't know anything about Dan Harmon and beyond yeah. <laughs> like those shows and the chevy chase voicemails uh it's like <laughs> <laughs> you gotta look up heat vision and jack okay that's um, that okay. it was a it was a pilot that they shot um and you you can find it online it's just batshit insane but it's a bunch <laughs> of people that are all huge now it's uh jack black uh, is 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 Jack, and then mm-hmm. Heat Vision is his motorcycle that used to be his partner that's been turned into a motorcycle, and that's voiced by Owen Wilson. <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, and and like everybody else in the show are all you know bigger name actors. I want to say like Jeffrey Tambor or something was yeah. it? Like it, yeah, it's it's insane. Uh, but it's a pilot that should have gotten picked up, but I don't think they did it because it was going to be too expensive to produce. Oh, that sounds about right. <laughs> uh, it's very much that Bob and David type like humor, but mm-hmm. just like explosions and crazy shit. Oh, so. yeah. See, that would be like right right up my alley too. Yeah. Uh, as far as like the the Rick and Morty thing, I, I love Rick and Morty, but the whole thing about those little like plush figures I <laughs> used to keep in my backpack. Yeah. Was uh, I live off the Wilson stop. On okay. the red line. And that stop now opens directly into Target. So I just stop there every single day <laughs> and try to find something useless to buy, apparently. I just programmed to do that. And I just saw these Rick and Morty dolls one day. If you if you came to my house, yeah. you would see now there's like Lucas from Stranger Things and all these Black Panther like action figures and Rick and Morty and like Dragon Ball Z stuff. It's just because my train stop opens into Target. Like I would not <laughs> your buy these things otherwise. What you're saying. That's like, it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I feel like that that needs to be a character in something. Like, <laughs> like yeah. that's it, it's drifting into that you know not to pin something on you but the forty year old version and like that sort of character with all the all the action figures and everything like that honestly what it feels like (laughs) it's what it feels like you asked me uh how do i have time to do anything else i just don't have a social life i just write and talk to these things (laughs) like that's (laughs) that's all you you just cross the two over you socialize with your students (laughs) and and get to be friends that way yeah but but i mean and that's that's the interesting thing is like you and i probably are close to the same age uh, and yet I'm going through this program because I came to this late. Uh, you know, I took the perspective of I wanted to learn how to how to do filmmaking when I was in, in college, but mm-hmm. did not have any of those resources. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, just sort of glommed on and bought the equipment and started teaching myself uh, over time. So I'm late in this. Like I'm third oldest in my cohort and I think third oldest out of my term going through at once. Mm-hmm. But uh but yeah, it's. It, it, I think it would have been interesting to get into it sooner, like you did. <laughs> yeah, I I always look at that as uh, a function of being a smart poor kid. <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, which was, I was kind of like smart enough to know I needed some practical skills and yeah. so I was like pretty good at school mm-hmm. but then poor enough and dumb enough <laughs> to like dream <laughs> and like, <laughs> and like want to hit a home run <laughs> so uh, like all the classes I was in uh, like all my friends were kind of like well off right? yeah and I look at them now as like lawyers and doctors and like these researchers and professors with PhDs and I'm a film school teacher right? yeah <laughs> and and a writer and uh, so like getting to it like early for me was just a function of like wanting to hit a home run with life. <laughs> yeah. Like I just, I'm a dreamer. I just want to dream. So I actually like love it when, when people who are older and like have had life experience are students in the class. Like I, yeah. I find myself like attracted to those people more and, and like, how does your brain work? Oh, this is great. You're like discovering this in a way that I wish I had. Right. Instead of, um, 
I know the idea is like time's running out, or right, or like I yeah. had all those years to like do this and I didn't do Could it. Could have gotten this done uh, a while but ago. I, I honestly feel like if I came to uh, writing maybe just like three years ago mm. or, or like filmmaking in some way, that I would I would have a different appreciation for it. Yeah, right? is like some of the things I discover that I like now. Uh, there is that sense of like, oh man, is time running out to do this? Uh, mm-hmm. And it's all still like, I'm still that stupid poor kid because it's all like professional wrestling. Do I have time to do that? Can I like get into that now? <laughs> <laughs> or like battle rapping? I could do that, right? Like, well, the internet's so. made all this stuff so much easier because now it's on your schedule. So <laughs> exactly. if, if you decide you want to watch professional wrestling at two in the morning, that, that is something you can make happen without too much difficulty. That happens every day. <laughs> 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 so what, what kind of stuff are, are you into? What What's your... Uh, uh, diet of of content typically look like uh the pro wrestling thing is not a joke (laughs) i I do that i don't doubt it all the time uh i still love film theory and film criticism Mm -hmm. so uh and the internet makes that so easy to find now like uh i came in through like formal training of doing film criticism so like listening to roger ebert like reading everything he ever wrote Mm -hmm. and all that stuff was great and like taught me so much about film and uh but now i like the comedy bent to it Mm -hmm. so i'll watch channels like cinema sins and like honest trailers and i love consuming that kind of stuff yeah like give me some funny take of just like nitpicky and like shitting on fanboys (laughs) have you seen uh zach morris's trash i love zach morris's trash that's the kind of stuff i consume i just showed it to somebody the other day (laughs) and i was like how have you not seen this (laughs) this is magical and it it also, at the same time, hurts my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's my theory on that. It's like, we all knew it. <laughs> we yeah. all knew Zach was trash. He was just still popular. We still wanted to be Zach's friend. You he's know? he's almost like, he's not the original anti-hero, but as far as like <laughs> like <laughs> stories from, from like when we were coming up, like that's that's the, he's he's the anti-hero. Yeah. I, I can't think of, I tried thinking about this the other day, trying to think of somebody else that is that kind of terrible character and the closest i got was like johnny bravo or something like that (laughs) like which i wasn't even into like but that that was that was the show that i think did it the best yeah yeah what it was in movies you know where we get like uh ferris bueller's day off yeah i don't want that kid to win why why do we root for this kid you know he's a a terrible person he's terrible (laughs) and yet he's from chicago so you gotta root for him (laughs) you gotta pass (laughs) um so what uh what kind of stuff are you working on right now um Besides, so we'll we, actually, what was Wheelhouse first? Just for the, okay. the pitch for, for people that don't know. So Wheelhouse was a pretty awesome thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, my friend Andy uh, lived in New York for a while and like had a, a corporate job. And the only way he connected pe- with people was like playing softball, mm-hmm. right? And we were talking one day, just like throwing around ideas. And uh, we're talking about this New York Times article that was saying how people don't make friends at work anymore. Yeah. Uh, And it's because people sort of like hide behind their work personas and like what they're presenting at work. And uh, he like came up with this idea based on like his experiences. And we pitched it a lot to each other and like talked about it and like how fun it would be. We always uh, he played soccer and I played basketball. Mm -hmm. And we always wanted to translate sort of the beauty of sports and like how natural stories just happen within any game yeah. uh, that you're playing, we always wanted to translate it that translate that to TV or film, and so uh, he came up with this idea for a wheelhouse, and it was as a half hour series. Mm-hmm. Uh, took it around for a while, like nothing happened with it, and then this uh, opportunity came up with Chicago content creators to get funded for a web series, and uh, this is maybe like three years after the original idea, mm-hmm. and I called him up, was like, yeah, I think wheelhouse would be perfect for this. Mm-hmm. And so we started, like, what would this look like as a web series? And we started brainstorming that. And uh, we actually, like, got the funding for it, so we were going to film it. And we created just these three, like, web series stories that really don't have much softball in them, uh, which is, like, actually what I'm really proud of. There was a lot of heart and, like, story to it. And uh, we created this thing, filmed these three little vignettes, essentially, Mm -hmm. uh, that are about eight minutes each. And uh, like roughly the length of a pilot, but all feel like they would be pulled from different episodes. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to like just take that around, see if anybody can see the show that we see. And uh, and would the goal be to keep it as a as a web series to 
go wherever the 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 money is for it what's 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 it, the intent it lives best as a half hour series yeah right if you were thinking about like mashing up the office with friday night lights right in, okay. in some way it's like the office if half that show took place on a softball field okay know? uh and just all about people busting out of their work personas yeah right? of like i'm just the guy in accounting that you kind of sort of know and i like my coffee like this but on the field as someone who's like really insecure about He's a being good in the as sport. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, and like that's the show and there's like something really beautiful about that to me of like someone who's an assistant in the office is now like the head person in charge you yeah. know uh, out on the field but there's that different dynamics which mm-hmm. i i can sort of relate to so like the first film that i did out of college was for a 48 hour film festival mm-hmm. and I, I was working at apple at the time so just tons of creative people that were all just looking to you know do any project uh-huh. they're like as long as it's not work i'm there <laughs> yeah. uh and so i actually got one of my managers who was one of the, my producers for it, and i was directing so it was kind of interesting to do that flip and be and realize like oh i'm telling him what to do yeah now. <laughs> yeah but we we're, were about the same age and it wasn't that big of a deal but it, it was still interesting to me to just kind of see that that yeah, same see flip. That dynamic flip right yeah and, and and nobody's ignorant to it you realize it as it's happening yeah which uh uh, is why I think it like lives best as a half hour series. You mm-hmm. can really play with emotional arcs out there. Yeah. So, well, and yeah. I think that's that's good too. The 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 recognition that you've got for the uh, for it not following the softball but following the people because mm-hmm. that's softball is the plot. Like mm-hmm. that's that's mm-hmm. the reason that they are all together. Yeah. Uh, but the the story, the thing that people are actually going to glom onto and be most interested in is going to be yeah. the, the the individual interpersonal relationships. Yeah. The softball is the candy. Yeah, you know, like we can sell it. Oh, like you want to watch idiots play softball? It's like great. Yes, I do. Yeah. And then while you're getting that, you know, like put these really intricate like stories in there and mm-hmm. interpersonal relationships that they all have For to. Sure. I'm sure there's some love triangles and that sort of thing that oh, play yeah. out in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah of course. Easy peasy. So what else are you working on? Um, working on a movie right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so many movies that. Uh, feel like little indie dramas you know mm-hmm. like I, I did this movie with uh, another writing partner greg hess about this kid who in 1980s detroit who finds out that miles davis might be his father and decides he's gonna just take a road trip no money no skills no plan go from detroit to new york and just figure out like i gotta meet him like i gotta know if this guy is my father because that would make me special in some way right interesting so doing that doing this other movie about uh a young girl who kind of like hates her big family Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um she's 17 years old and she plays the lottery every week at a little corner bodega a little scratch off ticket yeah and she wins seventy five thousand dollars. and it's not like life-changing but it's like I can i can leave i can just get away from my family i don't have to tell them i can collect this money and go and the catch of it is, you have to be eighteen to claim. The I was going to say, yeah. like, isn't that, that right? I've, I've, I'm seeing that problem. I'm like, wait a minute. Exactly, exactly. And uh, you only have ninety days to claim it, and she turns eighteen in ninety-one days. So oh. she's got to find someone to to be, to be uh, the the right, carrier, right. so to speak. Yeah, interesting. Actually. And so, uh, and all these are like kind of you can see them being indie movies, right? Yeah. I really, really want to write something big budget. Yeah. And, and like I want to write a hundred million dollar movie <laughs> yeah. with like tons of effects. Uh and so I'm just kinda going over ideas of like which one is like really, really worth my time right now to yeah. like uh dive into. Well it seems like that's I mean, the path you're talking about is the way in that so many people have taken. Um uh who's the guy that directed uh Black Panther? Uh uh Ryan Coogler. Yeah. Yeah, started out with yeah. Fruitvale Station. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, coming t- taking in the the path that way. It's yeah. it's very much in, in that same vein of Absolutely. like you start out with something small. Uh uh, uh, wasn't um J.J. Abrams? I think was the same path. He had, oh, I can't remember the small movie. Like he he wrote regarding Henry. I mm-hmm. think if I remember right. But mm-hmm. then he also when he started directing, he had to go through kind of that indie path first. Yeah, kind of like make your own thing, do yeah. the DIY style, and then yeah, and then get noticed for that, and go create the the next big thing after that. Right. right. Which is just it's weird to consider like. You know, a Justin Lin who only does like Fast and Furious type <laughs> exactly. stuff at some point, you know, made some little indie picture in order to to get to where he's at now. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Christopher Dolan path, too. Yeah. Right? Like, what, yeah. what was his first one? Uh, you know? Was it Memento? Or did he was that one? his first? Wow. Yeah. That's a. It is. It, it's a small. It, it feels bigger than it, than the movie. Right. Actually right. Is. Yeah. Because at the time, like. Because Guy Pierce, he wasn't even, wasn't even that big of a name mm-hmm. per se. Like he was still kind of low mid level. Yeah, yeah. But interesting. So, 
how uh you you've been teaching here since the since the beginning for Harold Ramos? Oh yeah. That's... And what it, what have you seen what trends what do you like what you know what's working as far as uh, as far as students are, are concerned here as far as students are concerned uh the curiosity you mm-hmm. know when when students are like curious enough about the craft uh like that's really cool i, I think some people in the past have like gotten here and figured out okay now the school's gonna do its work the school's mm-hmm. gonna work for me but it's like no you still gotta like put it you're only gonna get out of it what you put into it yeah right? And getting in here was the first step, not the yeah, not the biggest step. Right, right. Like you like you made it. Now you got to like really put in the work to stand out, you know? Yeah. Uh and so when people are curious and um and like reading more, watching more are uh, really like losing sleep and taking yeah. advantage of of like the talks that are here. I I think that's great for them, right? Like that's to me that's a clear indicator of like oh that person that's the person i want to like recommend uh, yeah. for something who's like curious outside of just what they're being fed in, in the school yeah uh even my teaching style i hope it comes across as like i don't know <laughs> i don't know what the right <laughs> answer is uh it's like what do you think it is you know like you've got to find out what's right for you and like how you understand like stories the best right mm-hmm. and uh so one, I, one thing I can say I've gotten from from you from this isn't even necessarily your teaching style, but it comes through in your teaching style too, is that you're willing to pitch anything to anyone and have anyone read anything at any point in time. Yeah, right? that's a lot of the word any in there, but like that's <laughs> yeah. that like that's the openness that you know we had uh, a class where we didn't have one student uh, show up for a reading, and you're like I got something, and you yeah. pull out so, I think it was Wheelhouse, wasn't yeah, it? Wheelhouse, yeah, it was Wheelhouse, yeah, and and it was and we wound up doing read throughs and kind of seeing that like an early reiteration of of what that looked like, yeah, and that's that's cool, like that I appreciate that uh, that aspect of you just don't be too precious with stuff just always be putting it out there and get feedback and oh, try yeah. and cycle it back into what you're doing next yeah absolutely because uh, it, it makes a huge difference it's it's you you can have an idea in your head forever and mm-hmm. you can think about it 100 different ways inside out upside down but if no one else ever looks at it right you're yeah. the only arbiter of whether it was good <laughs> yeah and like all feedback is valuable you know yeah. uh in some way there are of course there is of course more valuable feedback than others right sure. like yeah i want this professional to read my work and tell me what they think mm-hmm. but also you don't choose who's going to watch your movie right mm-hmm. like and we've all done the homework we've all been watching tv watching movies yeah like our whole lives right it's like you know what you like and what you don't like and now like maybe you can tap into what you like or don't like about my work and right. that's going to help me right like you are my audience no matter who I'm showing it to yeah and yeah like don't be too precious about it right like all we're doing is making stuff up yeah like this is all it's all fine there's no stakes to it i mean cat got to set up with the the whole idea that somebody's going to steal your idea at some point in time <laughs> like you're going to have some idea that's put out in the world somebody else yeah. is going to either steal it outright or have through some you know divine intervention the exact same yeah, idea at the yeah. same time based on whatever social climate and whatever media is out there right. now like yeah. you're just going to arrive at the same concept at the same time exactly we all think we're brilliant and we're not yeah. you know it's <laughs> <laughs> like uh I, i'll tell you this uh i've met like four or five people who've had the same idea that i had about a story called henchman and it's like, oh, it's just middle management between a supervillain and their henchman. My and, old roommate. Well, yeah, there you go. He <laughs> wanted to do one called Red Shirts, and it was going to be about it was it was literally just going to be the story of the uh, of the red shirt guys on on Star on Star Trek on yeah. the, on the Enterprise, <laughs> and just their interpersonal relationships. And every episode, one of them was going to die. Like that was that's it, right? And <laughs> and we always think we're so brilliant, and we're the first to come up with that idea, <laughs> and we're not. As far as like stealing ideas go, I feel like if I came up with the idea. Uh, for you to steal it from me, mm-hmm. I have to tell you about it, then not work on it while yeah. you actually work on it. Right? right. And I'm like, if that happens, that's on me, man. I like I've had a huge head start. Yeah. Uh, because I came up with the idea. So if you have an idea and you think it's great and you're so precious about it, you got to work it. You yeah. got to get that thing out, you know. Well, and, and another thing I got from uh, Trevor was the the idea that if you're going to uh if you're going to try something out and, and you're worried about it being stolen material or, uh, you know, uh, encroaching on somebody else's property, he's like, 
the best thing that could happen to you is that is that they sue you because that means somebody's paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> like somebody has found you right. to know to know right. that they need to come after you. Like it's one thing if you're if you just post something on YouTube and you use a copyrighted song and they you know they send you a cease and desist. Mm. That's that's an algorithm that found you. <laughs> yeah. But if you're if you're uh, you know taking an idea from a, like for a feature and you're putting that online and somebody comes after you and says like oh, you're you stole this idea like cool let's oh, let's yeah. pl- send this to the <laughs> trades let's get out there i want my name in variety right, right now <laughs> someone will want to talk to me about hey, something man. at some all point pub, in time. all pub is good <laughs> <laughs> um so uh so with those features are you is your goal to actually produce those yourself is it to turn around and sell them what do you want to do with your stuff uh i want to sell them for yeah. as much money as possible <laughs> <laughs> and then never think about them again yeah uh yeah i hate being on set i hate their production side of things so i the guy who just wrapped a web, web series being i know on set. it was brutal <laughs> brutal uh like every night i was going home like i'm not going tomorrow i'm not i'm just not gonna do it <laughs> Uh, I don't like being on set at all. I really admire people who can. And the idea of directing a feature mm-hmm. to me is like so, I don't want to be anywhere near that process. And people oh. who can do it to me, it's like a superpower. Like I, I want to do I that. It. I yeah. want, uh, that's, that's, that's the life dream. I want to, I want to direct at least one feature. Yeah. You're like my hero right now. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. I just know it's a skill I do not have. You it's uh, it seems I, and i think the thing that's been great in me here is just this idea that directing is not on the onset job directing is the pre-work mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. if you if if you've directed well you've set up things that when you get on set it just flows and when you get into oh, the editing great. room it just flows yeah. and so and if something doesn't you know then it's the other mode is problem solver how do i fix that yeah how do i make that work yeah. and so you try and clear the path of as many problems as possible so when they do pop up it's the only one you have to deal with or yeah. one of two instead of one of 20 yeah see that's the job i want uh, like i was ep on the wheelhouse set mm-hmm. and i just get to point out problems that's great <laughs> like if i can just, you just be that be a continuity person, oh yeah editor for the yeah. entire thing <laughs> that's that's it I, I have no idea how to solve them just being like this is a problem i do your work <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a great job uh, if i can get paid to do that i would do that on every set hmm. i mean the, the job exists that's script soup <laughs> to a certain extent it's like oh, you missed this, this yeah i don't want to write anything down i just want to <laughs> pop up every the writer who doesn't want to write anything down <laughs> <laughs> that's me that's, it's full of contradictions um well in kind of wrapping up here if people want to try and track you down on social media follow along see uh see what stuff is coming out see wheelhouse when it's uh when it's actually available for uh, people to check out where can they find you they can't can't. nothing <laughs> they, at all they can't uh i am currently because i'm in like movie writing mode yeah uh, i'm currently off all social media oh wow right? but uh when i am on it's at brown Matic for everything okay yeah nice uh, but yeah currently do you have any professional website awesome. or anything like that to, no. uh, to share your stuff no used to i'm all done <laughs> all out of that game <laughs> you know <laughs> once i started learning i could go out to la and like actually get meetings and like yeah. take meetings i was like oh i don't need this i'm i'm done with it so I got rid of the website. How often do you go out there? I go out almost once a month now. Oh wow! So maybe a good like nine, ten times a year. Okay. Go out there, yeah. Nice. And it's just—is it you line up like four or five meetings in a time there? Or yeah, is it, I, or I try you... to if I can. That's mostly the goal when I go out there. But yeah. also, uh, my writing partners are out there. So Andy's out there, Greg's okay. out there, and I'll go out there. And it's good to just like get in a room with them. Yeah. For uh, for like two days and like, be able. Technology's to good, right but there. it's still not not replacement for being in the same room as somebody else. Exactly. You just pick up way more when you're in the same location. You have the same experiences. Yeah, yeah. Because I find myself if I'm on <laughs> like Skype or something. Uh, that I'm just on my phone or my tablet and I'm like checked out at certain points. And when you're face to face, you really hold each other accountable for attention span. Yeah. It, like, yeah. It always helps. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, I appreciate you doing this. Hey, thanks for having me on this. So that was Terrence T. Brown. Thank you to Terrence and to the Harold Ramis Film School and the Second City staff for their help. The song on this week's episode was So Hard by Derek Every. Find more of Derek's killer music at DerekEvery.com. That's D-E-R-E-K-E-V-R-Y. This show was recorded and edited by me, Tony Lazzaroni. If you want to hear more from me and my classmates, teachers, and a few special guests, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions or comments, send us an email at filmstudentpod at gmail.com or find us on Twitter and Instagram at filmstudentpod. And be sure to check out some of my and my classmates' work at filmstudentpod.com where you can also find links to all of our past episodes. See you all next week. Class dismissed. <laughs>